Welcome to Crazy Towns, 10 minutes or less. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I might take explosive one. Let's start the timer. TNT. Yo. There was a lady Ooh. in Colorado okay. uh, who got arrested by the police. Never been to Colorado, Jonas. I have not been in Colorado either. I hear it's nice. Rockies, right? Uh, Rocky Mountains? Yes. All right. Keep yeah, going. the Colorado Rockies are the baseball team. I don't know how mountains play baseball, but you know, but um, um, so they they take this lady, they put her back in the police cruiser. They're investigating her car, or whatever. No, is this the one I think it is? And then a mother effing train's coming down the tracks. Girl is in the back of the police cruiser. Why they parked the goddamn police car on the tracks, I don't know. But this Why poor effing lady gets hit. The train hits the car. She's in the back. They yeah. said. Uh, nine broken ribs, a broken arm, broken teeth, and injuries to her head hmm. because she was in this car, probably handcuffed. Yeah. When a train hits it, she's lucky she survived. Yeah. She's going to get there's, so much effing money from the police department. So, so there's it's unreal video footage of this floating around. It was, yeah, on, yeah of the car, of the, yeah, not yeah, of her yeah. afterwards, but the car getting hit. Yeah. Because it's on the, I think, the dash cam of the other and, police car. And when you're watching the video footage, there's nothing graphic necessarily unless, you know, you don't want to see a, a car get hit by a train. It's with. all imaginary, right? Because, like, you know, like, you see the car get hit, you're like, oh, that's effed up. But when you yeah. think about, like, what's happening, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but even when watching the video, and this will happen if you decide to go and watch it yourself at home, you're thinking, why don't they just move the car? Like, why, why is the car there is your first thing? And then it's like, okay, so you should probably move the car. And it's like trains, you know, they take a while to get there. You usually, know, trains usually, take a little well, while. Because usually there's gates that go ding, ding, ding. That tells you the train is w within 30 seconds from coming. Yeah, but why you, wouldn't your first response be run to the car, get in and move it? So, so I don't think this, this particular instance, those gates were there. But on the same note, or at least I didn't see them or they weren't activated or whatever. But on the same note, it's like you got ears. And you got eyes and you can see a train light coming down the road for at least, at least three to three to four minutes. It's not like the train just like turned the corner. It's like 90 miles per hour to hit this car. It but didn't do that. if they're in a more rural area and it's dark and they're messing around searching her car, you may not hear the train coming because not all trains are super loud. Right. And then it, some trains are going so fast. There's so much gross negligence on this right oh, it infuriated me watching it i was like what are you move the car move the I car i think the most negligent thing is why would you ever park your car on, on a train, train track? track number one is that number two is why aren't you moving the car well, well and here's the second part if i was a cop and i did park my car on train track say when i put someone in the back at that point i would at least back it off the train track because in my head i'm like i don't want to leave this person in yeah. a car on the train tracks bruh like, bruh, that, there's, there's so many shwitters and shitters that you could, you could, I, I mean, I, honestly, I just hope the cops get fired. Honestly, I hope. Oh, and that lady, I mean, thank yeah. God she survived. She is going to get paid. Yeah. I bet they won't bring her up on her charges. Oh like, yeah. They'll be like, you serve, you haven't. Yeah. You be like, uh, look, we're going to drop the charges. Uh, any, any chance you want to drop yours? No. And it's no, I'm not dropping my charges off. Awesome yeah, I don't even remember. I don't even think her charges were super serious. No. Like they were. I mean, there were obviously a reason they need to put her in the back of the car or whatever. But I couldn't even fathom. Like, have you ever been brutalis brut brutalized by the police, Jonas? I have not. Can you think of I, an, I've an never, instance where the I've never really had many experiences with the police. Okay. Um, I uh, let me see. Have I? Let's see. I uh. I've been pulled over for speeding a few times. Okay. Um, <laughs> I know a story about a young lady that I knew. Um, this was a, an ex-girlfriend of a, a mutual friend of ours. And uh, she got pulled over by the cops. And then uh, she was smoking a joint at the time. Okay. It was in the ashtray. Uh-huh. The cop pulls her over and says, is there any more weed in the car? And she said, no, just this joint and ashtray. The cop picks the joint up, looks at it. Hands it back to her and says, safe driving. Jonas, I shit you not. She was white. <laughs> she was a woman too. I didn't say nothing, but I shit you not. 
that is nowhere near the treatment that me or you or majority of these people on this planet would experience. I do have, I do have a uh, story similar, but not with weed. Okay. So I was I was coming home from a, a friend of ours house. I was driving on the turnpike on Memorial Day weekend. Okay. Heroin. Was, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And I was I was speeding. It was it was like it was like midnight. And I was speeding. I was going probably like 80, 85 or something. Not not like ridiculous because I think the yeah. speed limit is 75 on the thing. I get pulled over. The cop walks up. Right as the cop – right as I roll my window down, my cell phone starts ringing. It's sitting on the – in like the little console on the front of the dash. And he goes, oh, you can get that. And I was like, no, I'm good. I'll wait. And he's like, no, it's fine. You can answer it. And I'm like, no, it's fine. I'll call him back. And he was like no, – okay. And he goes, okay. And he goes – uh, you know, and you know, I pulled you over for speed, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Sorry about that. You know, whatever. And he goes, "Oh, you're not drunk. You don't even really have to stop speed and have a good night." Uh, and I was like, "Did you literally just tell me I don't even have to stop speeding?" Yeah. He just pulled me over to make sure I wasn't drunk because yeah. it was Memorial Day weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "I'm assuming there weren't too many people on the road." No, it was it was late. It was like midnight, so there, it was yeah. a turnpike. There wasn't a lot of people. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got me going. I I was by myself in the car. He just yeah. He was like, yeah, you're not drunk. Didn't you're even fine. check your ID or anything. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, I think oh. he, I think he at least looked at my ID, but uh, I don't know. Maybe he ran the plate before he came up or something to make yeah, sure I didn't yeah. wasn't wanted or something. Obviously, right? Um, but huh. yeah, and he was like, yeah, I just I just remember him going, yeah, you don't even really need to sp- slow down. You're fine. Huh. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks, yeah, yeah. officer. <laughs> now I have to admit, Jonas, like. Uh, uh, you now, if you're expecting me to come with, like, this deep-rooted, like, just racism story, I don't really have one because I've never really had any issues with the cops, to be honest. Well, yeah. The, I guess the, one of the weirdest interactions is when I had neglected to put, like, my uh, my registration sticker on the back of my oh, car. I've had one of those before, too, yeah. And it was like the cop pulls me over, and he's like, uh, yeah, see, your registration has expired. And I was like, oh, yeah, I have the sticker right here. I just haven't put it on yet. It was like, I just got it. I'm on my way to work, you know? And he was like, oh, okay, well, just make sure you have it on. Have a nice day. And I was like, oh, okay. I've never really had an issue with the cops. Yeah. I've been locked up, too. And I still feel like the cop was totally justified. Like, I'm not going to say. I was like, yeah, I effed up. I'm not going to ever say that I don't believe that people get mistreated by the police. Yeah. I also feel that, like, your attitude plays a giant part in how the cops treat you sometimes. Not saying that 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 is an end-all, be-all, because I'm sure there's people who are completely polite that get effed up by the cops. Yeah. But I feel like in any situation, not even dealing with police, if you ha- come to it with a good attitude and you're being kind and polite, <laughs> you're less likely to have very adverse effects, right? I'm not saying that that isn't a, a, a rule, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you know, if the cop, if I came up and, and the cop was like, and the cop was like, hey, can I see your license? Nah. I'm not gonna do that. No. Like immediately, they're like, "Oh, here we go." Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like the cops. You know, if you give them attitude immediately, you just start the whole effing situation yeah. off wrong. Okay, so if you are in the wrong for something, yes, but I do 100 percent believe in, in, in standing up for your 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 rights because you do have them. Oh, absolutely. And if you if you um, I was going to use a Neil Zora Harris uh quote but i can't remember it it's fine but uh apparently i'm just saying is that they will abuse you if you allow them to um, oh yeah i mean it's the same with that i mean they're in a position of power they'll use you as much as you'll let them yeah and even if they're interrogating you you know they'll lie to you because they can do that they can yep. lie to you all they want yep exactly. they can lie so i i agree with people like you see those videos of like people recording the cops and then the cops get all been out of shape about that sorry buddy the law in this country is is that i can record you because this is public you right. Know? So you can't do anything about it. And the cops get bent out of, sh- out of shape and then they end up taking that guy into custody. And it's like, oh, well, he just, he's going to get a lawyer and he's going to sue you right. because you yeah, unlawfully exactly. detained him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you can't detain someone because they're recording you and you, yeah. you want them to stop. Exactly. You can't do that. Sorry. That's not the way the country works. So there's, there's situations like that where I'm like, yo, noncompliance is probably one of the better things you could do because, yeah, let it escalate and let me call my lawyer. Yeah, it's just it's just an awful situation because especially with all the stuff you hear about that happens with cops, right? Like, yeah. and, 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 you know, I try not to like just – you cops deal with really bad people. Their job is dealing with really bad people. Yeah. So like, so like, they have to assume worst intent. Yeah, yeah. They because, have to protect themselves. They want to make a goddamn home. gun. They don't know you from Steve. Yeah. Like, they're, you, they're trying to make it home tonight. Right. Because they it. could walk up to you. You start giving them ish, and then you have a gun in your lap, and you're just like, boom. Like, 
Like, and that has happened. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They, there's you've seen stories of they pull someone over and he happens to be wanted. He has a gun. They come, knock on the window. Boom! Shoot the cop. Drive off. Like it. It happens. So it's like my mindset every time I've had to interact with a cop is just been like, be nice, be kind, do what they ask if it's within yeah. reason, right? Yes. Like I'm not. I would never say be antagonistic, but if they're antagonistic to you and you're in the right, you gotta yeah. stand up for yourself. I did have that one guy ask me all those weird questions I talked about a long time ago, where he pulled me over. He was like, that. "Is there any large sums of cash in the vehicle?" And I was like, "What are you? Have you ever done drugs before? Ever?" I was like, uh, yeah. "What is happening right now? Why are you asking me all these weird questions?" <laughs> So, anyways, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Please go to thecrazytown.com. Subscribe for Jonas. TNT. Oh, uh, yeah.